My name is Richard Lojudice, and I work here at UNESCO headquarters. In my capacity as English editor for the cultural sector, on a daily basis, I work on texts dealing with key UNESCO priorities, such as promoting diversity and intercultural dialogue to combat intolerance and discrimination. As a gay man, these themes have special resonance for me. However, shortly after joining the organization, I realized that UNESCO was strangely silent on LGBT-related issues, both as regards staff rights and in its programmatic work. In 2007, UNESCO did, in fact, recognize uh, same-sex marriages for its staff. However, that rule did not cover domestic partnerships. Now, at the time, only 10 countries had legalized gay marriage, which means that the vast majority of UNESCO staff had no access to marriage. And as a result, their partners had no access to any of the benefits that were accorded to the straight couples. For example, medical coverage, retirement. And this situation was particularly problematic for those colleagues who were working in any of the 80 countries around the world where homosexuality was illegal. As I considered this situation to be discriminatory and also completely incompatible with UNESCO's core values of diversity, human rights, and equality, I decided to take action. I felt compelled to take action, in fact. So with a handful of like-minded colleagues, mostly interns, mostly straight, we decided to form a group called UNESCO Globe. We relied very heavily on the support of UN Globe in New York, moral support and also for its advice. And another important ally of ours was the, uh, one of the UNESCO staff unions, the STU which was particularly important because it gained us access uh, to negotiations with the administration. Our goal was to convince the Director General to amend the staff rules to accord the same rights to domestic partners as to married couples. Our strategy was very simple. First and foremost, we had to inform the UNESCO community, from our fellow colleagues to member states all the way up to the Director General. We learned very quickly that people were, weren't aware of the situation. They simply assumed that domestic partnerships were recognized by UNESCO. So how did we proceed? In 2000 and 2009 and 2010, we took the floor at the annual staff meeting with the Director General. We highlighted this inequality and we appealed directly to the Director General to amend the staff rule. On staff day, December 2010, we mounted a diversity stand. We distributed a straight facts information sheet that we had prepared specially for the occasion. And we also distributed a very attractive I love diversity card and we posted these and other useful documents on the UNESCO Globe blog. The strategy paid off. Very soon, the issues was on the table in negotiations between the staff union and the administration. And in April 2011, UNESCO Director General Irena Bokova, the organization's first female Director General, amended the staff rule by changing the definition of spouse to include domestic partnerships recognized by any national authority. This new rule represented a huge step forward in the combat for equality within the UN system because it departed from the common UN practice of establishing personal status on the basis only of the staff member's home country. This means, for example, that a UNESCO staff member who enters into a French civil union will benefit from the same rights as his married colleagues, even if his or her country does not recognize that union. Now this has far-reaching consequences for colleagues from countries with anti-LGBT legislation. These colleagues obviously could never dream of receiving recognition from their home country. So with this new decision, UNESCO's policy became fair, inclusive, and completely consistent with its core values. In fact, UNESCO's staff policy is now considered by UN Globe to be a model for other UN agencies. We all know that much remains to be done in this area. As regards staff rights, the UN Pension Fund and the UN Mobility Policy is hardly gay-friendly and needs to be amended. But today, I'd like to send out a very simple message, and this message goes especially to colleagues who are in UN agencies that have not yet granted full equality to LGBT staff. And that message is, you can affect change from the bottom up. You don't need a lot of money, you don't need a lot of people, however, you do need a very sound strategy. You do need a very creative 
uh, communications campaign and you have to have a lot of perseverance. Things are moving forward at an unprecedented rate. The tide is clearly in our favor, so let's remain optimistic.